Now the slide says there's three levels of monitoring, but I'm going to be bad and say that there's really four. There's the operating system, there's the application, there's the database. But because the interconnect is such a premier piece of this architecture or infrastructure, I treat the network as entirely separate as the database. Uh, I'll give you an example of something that happened recently at a customer site. Um, their rec started performing really poorly after, uh, for no apparent reason. There was no change in the database, no change in the application, no change in the staff, no change in the policies or procedures. What I did find out though was is that somebody had deployed some new switches and when they put the new switches in, they didn't configure the VLANs properly, they didn't turn on the jumbo frames for the VLANs, and so what happened was the network brought the entire high availability down. So you want to make sure that you have uh, both the experience, the baseline, and the metrics for all of these areas, and then you can freely uh, augment that with third-party tools. Now, I'll give you a good example. Uh, I work for a company called Quest. We have a tool called Spotlight on REC, and it's specifically for doing REC monitoring. There are other third-party vendors out there, as well as Oracle, who have built tools specifically for the REC market. Next slide, please. Next slide. Yep, there we go. Yeah, you went too, too, you went too many. One back. Okay, VM stat, IO stat, net stat, and OS watcher. These are all probably tools you're familiar with. Uh, of course, if you're using a Windows environment, you've got the Windows performance tools. All of those are great, but not all of them were designed with the concept of a cluster. They were designed with basically monitoring a node. And while they will work on a virtual environment for that particular node, they don't necessarily give you the information you need uh, for a cluster, other than, other than next step. Now the next slide, please. Now, AWR and Adam, we've mentioned a bunch of times. I do want to make sure that everyone knows that those are not free with Oracle. You better have bought the uh, OEM diagnostics and potentially the tuning packs. Um, these things are, are deployed by the database configuration assistant by default uh, on the good faith that if you're using them, you've paid for them. And if you look at the price list, uh, you know, they're like $5,000 per CPU. So not everyone has paid for these, so be careful. But that doesn't mean that you can fall back on stats pack or the old vstats and uh, UTL vstat and estats because, in fact, those, while they are helpful in a rack environment, I still use stats pack in a lot of sites. I know that it's not cluster aware and it's most likely never going to be cluster aware. And so even when it gives me insights, I often have to go back to the AWR and Atom, which are cluster aware now. Obviously, OEM is probably the easiest and uh, best known tool for manage all, managing all of this. Most people are familiar with the OEM database control because that's what comes with the database. You really need to, once you build a, uh, a grid infrastructure and, and you have a clustered environment, to move up to the grid control so that you get additional features that let you see from the 50,000 uh, point of view. Next slide. There's a lot of problems that can occur in REC. And rather than dive into any of these, I think the best one is the next to the last bullet item, which is what are some scripts to collect diagnostic information? If you can get these scripts, appreciate them, understand them, and possibly even improve upon them, all the other items will become non-issues for you because they'll just make sense. In other words, understanding what the problems are and how to identify them is really a lot more important than specifically picking on a name. The key point is there's going to be a lot of problems you're going to run into in a RAC environment that are radically different than the items that you're familiar with in a non-RAC environment. And so you need to develop the techniques, experience, and comfort. And the, and the key here is comfort when working with RAC. You don't just want to basically dive off on the deep end. Next slide. If I can make one quick addition, somebody asked a question on, the, on our question list about split brain. We don't have time to go into detail about these because, once again, we're, we're just running late. Um, but a split brain, very briefly, is if you have eight nodes and a network failure causes four of those nodes 
talk to each other, and the other four nodes can talk to each other, but they can't, the two groups cannot communicate. And so that's, your cluster is split in half. That can cause a situation which is very, very dangerous if it's not handled properly. That's a split brain, but we can't talk anymore about it right now. One of the things that, that uh, you need to get comfortable with as you're embracing RAC is, of course, there are a lot more directories with a lot more log files, and there's a lot more information in those log files. You need to get comfortable. Now, uh, if your clusterware is installed in a different Oracle home, and I mentioned this for prior versions of Oracle, say you're still on 10G or 11G R1, you need to remember that you're going to have to go look at these other alert logs in that other Oracle home, not just the Oracle home for the actual database and the binaries. Uh, some of these tools are fairly intuitive to use, uh, CRS stat and uh, server control manager, uh, but you actually a lot of times have to actually dig into the log files to find the information you're looking for. Next slide, please. Finally, when you're working with the Oracle uh, rack environment, as, as I've really stressed, there's so many different things. Now, the MeadowLink, the second bullet item with the rack frequently asked questions, is really a great starting point. In fact, a lot of times, uh, even someone who's done RAC for a number of years, I will go out there and someone will ask a question in the frequently asked questions that sparks my mind and makes me think, aha, I never thought of RAC in that way before. So this is a good place to start. The other is the uh, second to the last bullet item, or third to the last, gathering instance evictions in a RAC environment. You need to be able to identify when this occurs. So not only do you have to understand how it occurs, but you need to understand how you detect when it occurs. What are the circumstances that cause that to happen? And then finally, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you've got the, your OS monitors like OS Watcher and then your Perf one with your uh, Windows tools. I've actually seen where there's been some recent people who have published some open source additions that you can pull down to do as, a, as an add-in for Perfmon that are Oracle specific. So you might want to look at that if you're in the Windows environment. Next slide. Jeremy, I think that's you. And I think we're going actually back to Tariq so that he can um, wrap up our actual live installation that we were doing of RAC into a virtual environment. Thanks, Jeremy. Thanks, Bert. Thanks, Ayad. Um, so we basically gone through the process of setting up a two-node VRAC cluster in Oracle VM VirtualBox. We created emulated shared hard drives to emulate the shared storage requirement for Oracle RAC using v, v, VBox Manage, uh, which is a command line utility within Oracle VM Worship Box. And I will quickly show you the status of the While you're bringing up the status, uh, I just wanted to mention for the other people out there, if you're not comfortable with VirtualBox, I've done this exact same experiment with VMware Workstation. Uh, I've also used the free VMware server. Uh, there are some difficulties with doing the shared disks, but there are workarounds published out there on the web. I've tried to do this with Hypervisor on the Windows environment. I haven't been successful yet, but I think that's my own stupidity or, or lack of experience. Technically speaking, I can't see any reason it wouldn't work there as well. So you can pretty much do what we've done here with your tool of choice for virtualization. Thanks, Bert. So as you can see on the screen, we have a two-node VRAC cluster with two instances, all housed of, out of my Windows-based laptop machine. Uh, and I would encourage everybody to download and install and re practice the whole thing using the guide, which is available at brainsurface.com. Quickly go into SQL Plus and check up on the status of the instances. So as you can see, there are two instances in this virtual infrastructure uh, which are up and running. The whole thing runs very slow, but that's, that's uh, something that we already do know. It does allow us, however, to 
uh, practice, configure, learn, install Oracle Rack without the need for physical dedicated hardware. And with that, I appreciate all of you joining us. We are right about at the end of our time slot here. I would encourage all of you to join us on, in, in, in the third session on Janu January 20th at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I thank my co-panelists. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you, Bert. Thank you, Syed. And you have a great day.